Today on the GameSmith, we're going to be making a wharf. No, not the one from Star Trek. another gamesmith video in today's episode we're going to be making wharfs and jetties for use with our aquatic tiles now these tiles are meant to be modular so they can be used with any of our other aquatic tiles and including our accessories such as our docks and our piers let's check it out to begin we're going to be using these artist cotton canvas boards we typically use blank ones but the fact there's a pattern on this board doesn't really matter the dollar store I usually get these 11 by 14 inch or 28 by 35 centimeter boards only had this variety available. Next we're going to need some tin foil or aluminium foil. We usually use this 30 centimeter or 12 inch wide roll from the dollar store. However, I recently found this 46 centimeter or 18 inch wide roll. The extra wide foil roll will help cover the canvas boards more efficiently. We need a sheet of tin foil to be bigger than the artist board. Then we wrinkle and crumple the foil to create a rough texture just like we've done in our other water tile videos. Don't ball the foil up too tight or you might damage it when you flatten it out. Next we mix some PVA glue and water. We want about a 60-40 or 70-30 water to PVA mixture. Make sure your mixture doesn't have any lumps in it before you start using it. We start by liberally coating the glue mixture on our canvas board. Make sure you get the glue all the way to the edges of your board. Just like our other canvas board builds, you don't want to press down too much or you'll flatten out the textures on the foil. Fold the foil over the end and glue them to the underside. After the glue is dried in about 8 hours, we can remove the excess foil on the back of the board. While the boards are drying, I'm going to plan out what the build will actually look like. First we're making a wharf, or a jetty, or both. We can come up with several design options. First of all, a wharf is parallel to the water, and a jetty is perpendicular to the water. Technically, this would be a wharf. This is a jetty, and this is the water. What we fundamentally need to do is identify the shape of our land features, and these other areas are water of some kind. We want the board's features to be slightly raised over the water. I also want to be able to use these boards with the docks and piers we made in another video. With that idea in mind, we need the board to fit one or more of the docks on it. And we need to know if the water will be shallow or deep. Another option would be to combine our wharf with our dock that extends off the board. Then we could put a water tile in front of that to extend or enlarge the play surface. I really like that idea. That's part of the plan now. If we can extend our land outwards, we can also extend it sideways. We have beach tiles that we made in an earlier video that we could use. And we also have some rocky beach tiles. So we need to be able to blend the edges of the tiles with other boards. How do we do that? How do we make it all modular in order to work with other tiles? I think all of the short edges have to connect some way. I could use steps at the end. I could also build a sloping edge. I could also build a flat or an abrupt edge. We could also combine these in some way, a slope on one side and an abrupt edge on another. I like this idea, a combination of a slope and an abrupt edge. We also have to build two tiles, so where do these formations go? If we build an L-shaped wharf and mirror it on another tile, this shared edge will have to be abrupt or square, and this will be a slope or a stair on each end. And then these areas will be water, and we can add a beach to the tiles as well. Then we can put the water tiles out front and add the docks at various locations too. As a result, our wharf needs to be roughly the same height as the planks of our dock accessories. I think this is the final design I'm going to settle on. Next I have some packing extruded polystyrene that is roughly the size that I want for our wharf. I plan on stacking these pieces together to be about the height of our dock accessories. Based on the decisions I made earlier in the planning stage, I need to cut these foam pieces to size. I have the perfect tool for this, an electric foam cutter. This tool will create a perfect edge for our wharf. Since our tiles are the same size, I can repeat the cuts to create all the pieces I need for both boards. We need only mirror the foam on our tiles to reveal how big the other foam pieces will need to be. 
Then we cut the foam to size and repeat the cuts we need for the jetty portion of our build. To glue our foam together, I'm going to be using this Elmer's Ultimate Glue. To use this product, we need a wet surface to activate the glue. We can use a sponge brush to spread the water since we don't want to soak our build. You'll also want a glove on your dominant hand in order to spread the glue. I decided to put a 1 inch or a 2.5 centimeter edge on the back so I can decorate it with rocks. I want to mark where the wharf is being placed. Next I'll use the sponge brush to dampen the foil base. We then add the glue to the styrofoam. We don't want to apply the glue to the damp surface or it will start to expand and harden. If we apply the glue to the dry side, then we have some time to spread it around on our foam surface. We want the glue layer to be thin and not right up against the edge of the foam. As I mentioned, the glue expands, so a thin layer will prevent the glue from deforming our styrofoam. Next, we repeat the process for the next layer and all the subsequent pieces that we need to glue. The glue can be quite messy and it will bond if it gets wet, so be careful how you use this product. We'll put our build on a plastic sheet just in case any glue leaks out the ends. I'll put down a second sheet on top of the build and then place a heavy object on top of that in order to press the layers together while it dries. Now that our wharves are dry, we can see that there are gaps in our build. It's unfortunate, but they're really easy to fill in. It looks like the styrofoam has slid away from the edge while it was drying. That will be easy enough to repair with leftover foam. Next, I have these decorative rocks that we first used in our bocage video from series 1. I want to use these to build up our seawall on our wharf tiles. Because the rocks are covered in dust, I want to wash them off. It will be easier to wash all of the rocks and clean out their container than doing a few handfuls at a time. There are a few tools that will be helpful on the next stage. These putty knives and a few acrylic palette knives can be very helpful. I found both of these at the dollar store. Next, I thought I'd use this quick seal caulking in order to affix our rocks. But instead, I've decided to use this very large acrylic latex caulking. I can mix the caulking with some tan acrylic paint in order to save me from painting it later. We use our caulking gun that I described how to use in the bocage video. We squeeze a good amount into a sturdy plastic container. It's better to have too much than not enough. Next, we pour some tan paint into the caulking and then we mix it together. Keep mixing this until the caulking has the consistency of thick peanut butter. Now because the caulking doesn't have any paint medium in it, it will brighten the tan paint. As a consequence, you may have to add more paint to the mixture in order to get the color you want. Next, we're going to need a plastic work surface and some work gloves. The plan here is to cover the styrofoam surface with our tan caulking and then add the wash rocks to the interior of the tile and the back as well. However, we're only adding caulking to this outside edge for texture. Now for the cake decorating. I mean, wharf building portion of the video. I'm going to apply the caulking quite liberally to where the rocks are going to be placed. If you're unfamiliar with using these tools, I suggest experimenting with them. We have about 30 minutes to work with the caulking so we don't have to hurry, but we shouldn't dilly-dally either. I'm placing the stones in a stacking pattern on our wharf so as to form a short seawall. I want to create a step or a slope at the end of our tile so that the minis can easily move from one tile to another. We keep working our way around the tile, building up the caulking and adding our decorative rocks. We also want to create a flat deck on our wharf, so we spread the caulking out on our top walkway. Next we want a flat wall on two edges where our board will be placed beside our other wharf tile. I want this surface to be as smooth as possible. We want to make sure our wharf deck is flat, and we could add some textured coffee stir sticks if we wanted to. We could also add some rocks or other surface features. However, I think I'm going to sprinkle some decorative sand over it instead. This is the same sand that we've been using throughout the entire series. We can liberally cover the top of our wharf while the caulking is still wet, so it will get a firm grip on the sand. Now we need only wait 24 to 48 hours for this to completely dry. It would normally dry much quicker, but we added a lot of moisture by mixing in the paint in order to change the color of the caulking. After our build is completely dry, we remove the excess sand. Of course, we want to save as much as we can to use later on. Next, we want to reinforce our sand texture. To do that, we can use the same PVA blend that we used earlier on. Just make sure to give it a good stir so there's no lumps in the mixture. And then use a wide brush to paint the mixture all over our sandy surface. Normally I'd use Mod Podge and tan paint, 
but I don't want to paint the sandy deck again. A thin layer of PVA and water will dry clear and seal the sand to our build. And it should only take a few hours to dry. Next I want to make some rough guide marks on where our sandy beach and water depths will be placed on our tile. These marks don't need to be exact measurements. I think a general idea of where to place the beach and color layers will be good enough. Next we need some PVA glue and sand mixture for our small beaches on the tiles. We want this mixture to be quite fluid so that the sand flattens out as it dries, just as it did in the beach video earlier in this series. Please check out the beach tile video if you'd like more information on your sand mixture. Now we'll add our small beach area to our wharf tile just below the seawall. The layer should be thin and stretched out even thinner at the leading edge. Next we're going to be adding our water feature by using this colored tissue paper like we have in our other water tile videos. This tissue paper technique has been covered rather extensively throughout the series. I suggest you check out video 2 on beach tiles and videos 5 and 6 on rocky shorelines for the most help. However, video 1 on water tiles will help the most for instructions on how the tissue is to be layered to create our water effects. Using a nylon brush, we can model the last few watery features and then leave our board to dry. After the tissue is dry, we have all these wonderful textures to paint in order to highlight the motion of the water. To do that, we're going to dry brush our frothy water with just simple white acrylic paint. We also need a brush with a wide flat toe. We have covered how we're dry brushing our wave features quite extensively in videos 1, 2, and 5 of this series. The only other suggestion I have is that if you're using other tiles, you want to try and match the painting scheme you've done on those as well. Here is a close-up of our completed waves and beach. It's certainly not the largest feature on the tile, but it does draw attention. Next, our sandy wharf has drawn my attention. Unfortunately, the beach and the wharf look quite similar, so I think I'll add a burnt umber dry brush to the wharf. We do this in the exact same way as we did with any other dry brushing. However, I'm using a larger brush since I have much more of a surface area to cover. As we finish off the dry brushing on our sandy deck, I should mention that we should also dry brush the sides. Even though we won't likely see this feature on the table, I don't want the build to look unfinished. And here are our completed tiles! The seam between them is a bit ragged, but I can live with that. We can create a little harbor with jetties on either side. The fact that the waves don't flow in the right direction does look a bit weird, but I'd still use these tiles in this pattern. I can also enlarge the inlet and the waves look much better. Overall, I'm very happy with how this build turned out. All told, now we have almost half a dozen different water tiles to use at our game table. For the most part, these tiles are modular and interchangeable. I still have a few more water tile ideas to develop, but if you have a suggestion for another type of water tile, I'd like to hear from you. If you'd like to support what we're doing here at the Gamesmith, please hit the subscribe button. If you're already a subscriber, please hit the thumbs up button and leave a comment. You might also check out our blog at thegamesmith.org. We post the building materials for all our crafts on our website too. You might also check us out on Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram. Until next time, I'll see you at the table.